If you want to work with Git and GitHub, you need to have access to that GitHub URL. It's with that GitHub URL that you can uniquely identify your GitHub repository. And once you've got that, you can clone that remote GitHub repository, bring it down to your local file system where you'll have access to all the files associated with that repository. You can add files, you can edit files, you can then add those changes to git staging index do a commit push your changes back to the server so other people on your team can see them for that matter if you've done a clone and you've got all of those files in your local file system and somebody updates github you can just do a pull and bring all of those changes down right to your file system you can even do a fetch and a merge if it really suits your fancy but either way if you want to do all of this collaborative stuff you need that github url and i'm going to tell you everything you need to know about finding the github url using the github url and doing all those important collaborative operations where the github url is required hi i'm cameron mckenzie i'm the editor-in-chief over at the serverside.com we've got lots of great tutorials on git and github and you know i really have to be one of the world's biggest git advocates and you know, whenever people are using Git, the first question they always ask me is, how do I find that GitHub URL? Well, here's my GitHub account. Actually, the GitHub account is one I created for helping people learn Git. It's called Learn Git Fast. And I'm on the repositories page. You know, if you ever get to a, a GitHub repository, there's usually like a landing page, which well, in this case, list repositories. Since there's a repository page that lists you know, nothing else but the repositories. And if you want to clone or work with a, a remote repository, you need its Git URL. Now it's easy to get. I've got a repository here called Salmon. I was talking about upstream branches in Git and nothing goes upstream like a Salmon does. And when I open up this project, you can see a number of files there, readme, alpha, bravo, there's a branch named main, but there's also a very happy green button there that says code in it. And then if you want to get that GitHub URL, you just click on it and you can see it right there. It even gives us some advice. It says, hey, if you want to clone this repository, Here's the web URL from GitHub to do it. Now, there's also a friendly little button there that allows you to copy that URL. I'm not too big a man to actually right click and copy it myself, but whichever way you wanna go, if you wanna work with GitHub, you need that GitHub URL. Now, what does it mean work with GitHub? Well, probably it means cloning that repository, right? If you wanna gain access to all these files and work on them locally, you have to clone that repo. So I'm here on my file system, I have installed Git. How do you know I installed Git? Well, when I right click on the white space in a folder, I get two options related to Git open git GUI here and open git bash here. I'm gonna use the git born again shell, the git bash shell, and I'm gonna use that to clone this remote repository. So this brings up a, a command window, terminal window, prompt window, bash window might be accurate. And all I have to do in here is say uh, git clone and then paste in that git URL, and now that's gonna clone that repository on my local file system. You can see the git URL there and the git URL and the clone command. And I'm gonna move this over just a little bit so you can see what's gonna happen here because it's all getting pretty exciting. There is that repos folder. As you can see, there's nothing in it. When I come back to this command, when I hit enter with extreme prejudice and vengeance, boom, you can actually see that that salmon folder, that salmon repository gets copied right down to my local file system. I have now cloned this repository from the server with that git clone command and the GitHub URL. Now, what can I do here? Well, I can open up this file and I don't know, maybe we'll add some files to it. I can right click on here and say, let's create a new text document. They've got alpha, they've got bravo. Why don't we add charlie.txt as well? Um, I've now added a file. I could even open up a, a file. Maybe there's alpha.txt. I could say hello world in there. So I've added a file, I've updated a file. 
you basically do development with all of these files. And when you're happy with the development that you've done, um, well, what you do is you tell Git that you want Git to keep track of these files. Telling Git to keep track of these files is, is also called adding those files to Git's staging index, staging the files. You just do that with a git add command. You can say git add, say git add dash dash all. You can say git add dot. You can say git add and the names of the files that you've changed. Oh, and look at this. I'm actually in the repos folder here. Bad me, right? I'm in there. That's where I clone to. And the folder itself is actually salmon. So I've got to do a, a CD into that salmon folder. <laughs> now I'm actually in the folder that has the Git repository in it. And now if I do that git add uh, alpha.txt command, boom, there you go, it works. Um, wow, that's embarrassing. By the way, how do you know that it's a Git repository? You can actually see that dot git folder there. It's a hidden folder, so if you, your system's not configured to show hidden folders, you won't see it. But yeah, that's it there. That's the heart and soul of Git. All of the good stuff about Git is inside that folder. Now you don't touch it, you just add your files. Okay, so I've added alpha.txt. I also added Charlie. So, you know, another way to add files to the index is just to say git add dot, which says add everything that's changed that's in this folder and every subfolder. So um, there we go. We've added files. We can say git status and the git status command tells us that alpha.txt was modified and there's a new file called charlie. They're both staged. And if I do a commit, these will become part of that commit. And doing a commit is what I'm all about. I'm not afraid of commitment. Um, git commit dash m. I'll call that my first local commit with the GitHub URL. Why not? So now I've got a commit and I've got a commit history on my local file system. And that git commit history is keeping track of the new files I've added and the changes that I've made. Now, what if I want to actually push this back to the server? Well, Git has actually stored that GitHub URL. It's actually kept track of that GitHub URL. So I don't have to actually paste in that GitHub URL anymore. If I actually want all these changes to go back to the server, which is uniquely identified by that GitHub URL, I can just say git push origin. Origin's kind of the name that we give from the server that we originally cloned from. Um, in fact, you can actually just say git push if you don't have, if uh, you've just got a simple configuration like I do. So I'm gonna say git push. I will be asked for my username and password, which is learn git fast. And let me see, where is my password stored over here? Okay, I put in my username, put in my password, and boom, all of a sudden, now I've pushed these files back up to the server. Now, how can I prove that? Well, if I actually come over to the server here and just do a click uh, and refresh, you'll know that you'll notice that now that I've refreshed the server, um, I've now got Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie and those files are now up on the server and those files also exist on my file system. Um, so there you go, once you've got that GitHub URL, you can clone a repository, bring the changes down, then you can start working on those files, push your changes back up to the server. The other thing you can do is you can actually fetch changes from the server. So I'm actually logged into GitHub here. Um, and if you've got a GitHub account and you log into it and you've got rights to add files, you can actually add files online. I'm gonna click this plus button here and you can see it's got an option to create a new file or upload files. I'm gonna create a new file, I'll call it devo.txt. Are we not devs? Here we go. And now I'll commit this change up on the server. And what is that? We'll call that the Devo commit or the GitHub URL tutorial. There we go. Okay, so now you can see that uh, previously I added changes to my local file system and I had to do a push to send them up to the server behind the scenes that uh, Git is keeping track of the URL of that remote server. Um, and here, uh, now I've got a situation where the server's got updates and I need them on my local file system. Now, the first time you go to uh, the server, the first time you work with that GitHub URL, you do a clone. Then every other time when you wanna get changes from the server, you do a pull. 
So I can now say git pull. Sometimes you'll see people saying git pull origin. Both will work. And now we do a git pull, and boom, you can actually see that now we have devo.txt on our file system. So all of this is working pretty darn good. It's pretty easy and simple to work with Git once you get a hold of that GitHub URL. Okay, now one last thing to deal with this GitHub URL. People often say to me, where is this GitHub URL stored? And maybe, how do you go about changing it? So you're not supposed to go into the Git plumbing. You're supposed to stick with the Git porcelain. Um, all the plumbing for your Git repository, well, a lot of it for the local repository is in this .git folder. And if you dig into that .git folder, you'll notice there's a file called config. And that's all the configuration for this repository. Every single repo that you create, every single repo that you clone will have a config file. Now, if I right click on this and say edit with notepad++, it comes up and look at that boom, all of a sudden uh, you see the reference to that remote URL there. So github.com, learn git fast, salmon.git. That is the exact same thing that we used when we cloned the repository from the GitHub URL that came up when we clicked on that green button. So that's where it's stored. By the way, if you ever need to, to change that or the, the URL changes of the repository, it's possible just to go in there, edit that file and save it. And then you'll actually push and pull to a, a different repository or repository with a, a different name. So there you go. Those are the ins and outs of working with that GitHub URL. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, I want you to head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there. And we've got lots of great tutorials on Git and GitHub and GitLab and Bitbucket and DevOps tools, Java, Scrum and Agile, you name it. Um, if you're interested in my personal antics, you can follow me on Twitter. I'd love it if you shared this on Twitter, if you enjoyed it, and maybe even send me a message. I love hearing from people. Um, I do have a newsletter, so sign up for that newsletter. Uh, the link is in the description. Um, not only does it have some updates and everything that's going on in the world of DevOps and GitOps, but uh, I do a lot of talk about software development and programming languages. There's a new language coming out called Mojo, which is set to replace Python and really revolutionize Nice AI and ML. If you're not up to speed on this uh, new programming language, you're really going to fall behind. So we talk about that a lot in the newsletter. So please check that out. And uh, of course, I've got a couple of books. You can see a couple in the background there. Pickering is Springfield and Hibernate Made Easy. So go buy lots of copies of those on Amazon. I think you'll also see uh, Darcy DeClute's Scrum Master Certification Guide in the background there too. So if you're into Agile, if you're into Scrum, you'd like to get a Scrum Master accreditation. That is the one and only book that you need. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Um, have fun with that GitHub URL. And finally, if you're watching this on YouTube, why don't you subscribe on YouTube?